The last step is very, very easy. We just need to set up the replication itself between the two Soleras. There's a nice, simple, easy wizard. And uh, with the real Solera, this is actually the only step that's needed. The only reason why we had the previous steps was because we deployed from an OVF or from a template. Uh, before you proceed, just make sure that your two Soleras can ping each other and their time sync is within a 10 minute skew. And if you look at the earlier videos in the module, you can see how to do that. So if we take a look here, let's quickly uh, uh, expand out the tree on the left. Again, you can always left click or right click on the tree to be able to do stuff uh, more quickly there. And let's run the replication, new replication wizard. Now, if we scroll up a little bit, you can see that this is a single wizard that can be used to set up all sorts of a replication. And Solera Replicator is ridiculously inexpensive, but it's very flexible. You can use it to replicate file systems, data movers, or iSCSI LUNs. Since we're talking about Site Recovery Manager, we're going to do um, uh, uh, a LUN. Now, the thing that's important to understand architecturally is that there's three layers, Solera pairings, data mover interconnects, and replication uh, uh, relationships. So the wizard, you'll actually set up all three. And the reason that there's three layers, it allows a lot of flexibility, as you'll see. So the first thing you do is you're basically setting up the rep relationship between the source and the destination Solera. So this is the destination Solera, and we put in the credentials. Now what it's going to do is you're going to create a name for the remote uh, Solera. So here our remote Solera name is uh, uh, CSDR. Um, and then there's a passphrase that's actually used to authenticate the two Soleras to one another as well as in, in encrypted, uh, encrypted traffic. What's neat is the wizard will actually set up the relationship on both sides. So you don't need to run it in two places, you only need to run it on one side. So here we're running it from the source side, in this case CSProd. Um, what this does is you'll actually see, notice how it's setting up this destination Solera on CSProd, and it's also setting up the Solera CSProd on CSDR. This step is just about complete. Okay, that's done. The next layer in the replication relationship are the data mover interconnects. Data mover interconnect is something that exists, and you can have many interconnects between two data movers and between uh, two Soleras. In fact, you can have multi-hop multi, uh, even uh, interconnect relationships. So here what we're going to do is we're going to pick the destination Solera, and we're going to need to set up this new interconnect. And you can think of it as like kind of a tunnel over which individual replication sessions run. So uh, we'll give it a name, um, and why don't we call it something that's obvious, like CSProd to CSDR. And then you're going to specify what data mover you want to use. You don't even need to go into the advanced settings, but if you see, it'll allow you to specify what interfaces as well as other interesting attributes. And now the question is, what's the peer from the remote side's perspective? Well. Uh, let's give it a name, and we'll call the uh, interconnect name going in the opposite direction, the inverse. This is a very powerful tab here, and it shows you some of the cool stuff you can do with Solera Replicator. You can set up multiple quality of service, where you specify bandwidth use by day and by hour, and you can specify multiple policies. Um, so again, this is very sophisticated, and again, one of the advantages of having kind of this multiple uh, relationships, Solera to Solera, data mover interconnect, and then individual replication sessions. So here you can see that it's configuring those interconnects between both sides. So it's just created the relationship from production to DR, and now it's going to the remote Solera and configuring the relationship in the opposite direction. And now we've got that configured, so we're going to select that one. Now here you can also specify um, you know, multiple different interfaces, simple but very flexible. And now we're actually going to set up the third layer in the kind of uh, replication model, which is the actual replication session. So uh, we're going to give it a name. So I'm going to call it iSCSI LUN0 from production to DR. We're going to specify the target and the uh, LUN that we created in the previous steps. And then we're going to select the destination side.
Now, <clears throat> here we're going to pick the target. And again, remember that as we discussed in the earlier part of this 301 series, it needs to be a read-only target for it to show up as an available option. Again, this is a very useful setting here because you can actually specify what's called the recovery point objective. In other words, how far out of sync can the two, the production and the DR side be? By default, it's 10 minutes, but you can make it shorter or longer. If it's shorter, you're going to use more bandwidth, but you'll get, you'll have less and less data loss. Um, if it's a larger interv interval, you'll uh, use less bandwidth, uh, but there will be a larger amount of lost data. And interestingly enough, EMC also offers completely synchronous. In other words, zero data loss options if that's your requirement. So basically, that's it. We're now replicating an iSCSI LUN between two of these Solera virtual storage appliances on an ESX server. Um, and if you then mask both the source and the target iSCSI LUNs to the ESX clusters, one on source and one on production, uh, all you need to do is basically install Site Recovery Manager, uh, use the Solera uh, SRA or Storage Replication Adapter, and you're off and to the races. Have fun.